Love them or loathe them, electric motorcycles are now with us. I personally really enjoy the experience of riding them. The thing that I found to be the biggest hurdle was charging. What chargers I can use, what cables I need, what rate they are at, how I pay for it. That seems to be the biggest hurdle for new electric motorcycle owners. Making that transition from internal combustion where you already know where all of the petrol stations are and they're easier to find to switch into electric. So I spent a day with Zero Motorcycles a few weeks ago to learn all about how to charge them and what's involved. This is how I got on. We're Tony from Man Cave Moto, who's come out with Man Cave today to ride some zeros. Electric bikes are simple. The bike itself is very simple. The thing that I found as a challenge as a newcomer to electric bikes is the whole charging. So where you can charge, what type of connector it is, what the power ratings mean, how long it takes, how you pay for it, all of that sort of stuff. So we've done some of that today. So we've been riding two bikes, two very different bikes, the FXE, which is the 11 kilowatt version, which is a lot more simple. And then obviously the DSRX, which is the top of the range adventure sports bike. I mean, the FXE is probably a lot more similar to the DSR you rode a few years ago. And really you just plug it into the wall. It's quite simple. You plug in to three pin socket. Just a standard three pin. Yeah, okay. the beauty of the bike is, is its lightness. It's got small, small battery and a smaller onboard charger, which does make it a great city bike. It's got a 7.2 kilowatt hour battery. So that in effect means that's what it can store. If you think of a, a petrol tank holding liters, yep. that's the number of units of electricity okay. it can hold. And then you've got the charger, the onboard charger, which is rated about 800 watts. So when you're plugging it into the wall, it's putting in around about 800 watts or 0.8 of a kilowatt hour per hour into that. How long would that battery, for example, take to charge from 5%? At that level, you're talking about an overnight charge or you're talking about, you know, if you're riding it to work, you're charging it during the day. But the good thing is there are some options that allow you to quicken up that charge. That 800 watt charger is quite light. You can buy an external charger and that is rated at over one kilowatt. So as you saw when we charged up the FXE and we plugged in the additional charger, it actually more than half the amount of time that it takes to charge up. And actually you can, if you need to, you can buy four of these external chargers, you can daisy chain them together. And that takes the charging time down to just over an hour. And obviously the DSRX is a much heavier motorcycle. And part of that is because it has a bigger battery, but also because it's got a lot more charging capability where the onboard charging on an FXE is basically eight, 100 watts on one of these as you saw you were charging it at 6.6 .6 kilowatts okay, yeah. so that's if i do the math not quite 10 times it's about eight times yeah, faster yeah. you're also starting with a bigger battery as well okay, yeah. you'll notice that when you started it was showing 110 percent which it sounds a little bit odd but what we've got is an extended range option on the battery which gives you that extra 10 percent of range for when you're doing a a longer journey at the speeds we were riding that you can easily get 100 miles before you really need to start thinking about recharging. I think one of the biggest challenges people have when they switch from petrol to electric is the charging points themselves there's quite a bewildering variety of them yeah, yeah. and it's what can you use what can't I use I can use that but it doesn't necessarily give me the fastest charge and that's sort of where we went a little bit of a tour to try and yeah understand the different types of charging points are out there yeah because logically in my head when i first started doing it i was thinking well the most powerful charger i can find is going to charge things quickly but i guess that's not the case it's down to what the capacity of that charger on the bike is to to get power in there's what charge that the charger's putting out and there's what charge the onboard charger is capable of handling we use alternating ac 
electric. So you're looking at AC uh, charging points. They're, they're the most plentiful out there, so that's good. And they tend to be more discreet than petrol stations, so sometimes people have difficulty finding them. But actually, when you, you know where to look, there's a few apps that you can use on your phone. When we went to the site in the, the car park, there was two very similar looking chargers. But once you got up to them, I noticed there was a difference. One showed seven kilowatts on it, the other one, 22 kilowatts so do you have to be careful or consider which one you're going to use what's the the difference between yeah, the two? so so with, with the zeros that we wrote the dsrx is you've actually got two onboard chargers so each of these modules sits above the battery yeah. and each of them is capable of charging your bike at 3.3 kilowatts so you've got two of them the seven kilowatt charger is a single phase charger so that single phase will activate one of the charging pods, one of the chargers in your bike. If you plug your zero into that seven kilowatt, it will activate one of your chargers and it will charge at about three point, I think we're seeing 3.3 3 to 3.6 yes, kilowatts. Yeah, we saw that on the yeah. screen. Yeah. If you plug into the three phase charger, you're getting three phases of electricity and that's going to activate both your chargers. So that's going to charge it at basically twice the speed. So we were seeing 6.9 kilowatts and actually, you can also get a third module which takes up the space in that, that storage space in the tank and that's called the quick charger and that gives you another 6.6 .6 kilowatts of onboard charging and actually that would on that three phase charger it would activate all three chargers and you'd be looking at sort of 13 kilowatts so that's going to re recharge your bike in less than an hour really you want to be trying to use on these bikes three phase charging where you can find it. Like the other charging point that we found when we stopped later for, for lunch, yeah, the, yeah. the bigger unit. The first ones we used were, we had to use our own cable, which obviously in, in that bike you can store in the tank, yet the bigger one was tethered, so you had the cable, you wouldn't need to necessarily carry one around with you. There's quite a few of those around, they're a bit less plentiful, and, and they tend to be a little bit more expensive. That was a great unit though, because it's a three-phase system, it's tethered, and it's contactless, so there was no need for an app or anything on that, you just literally just put your card yeah, down. I think it was 80 pence a unit at that one that we stopped at, which is still cheaper than petrol, but is actually, probably four times what you'd pay if you're charging at home. And that's still really the best way for you to charge your zero if you can, is to charge it at home. Obviously your three pin socket's not able to deliver as much power as these dedicated chargers, but it'll still charge, generally speaking, at 2.2, 2.3 okay. kilowatts. You know, I'm in an area that I'm not particularly familiar with, so I don't know where things are, but at home, you'll know if you're riding a standard bike, you'll know where the petrol stations are in the same way that if you ride one of these, you'll know where all the local charging stations are and how good they are and how quick they are. Absolutely, and range anxiety is real. You know, everyone who makes that, that transition experiences it. And it's only by realizing it's not as bad as you think it is that you actually start to overcome it and you start to realize that when it's saying 20% left, that, you know, you can slow down and go a little bit further or you can stop. If you want to go out to the beach or the seaside or something, it's very rare that there's not a charging post. And often, you know, people go, I don't know where they are because they're not looking for them. But actually, once you go there <laughs> yeah, once, true, yeah, yeah. you find it and, and it becomes your new routine. And, and actually, it's not as difficult as you, you probably think it is. Yeah. Just doing what we've done today has made a lot of stuff a hell of a lot clearer in terms of what I can do and where I can go. Yeah. And it's just having that little bit of knowledge. You wouldn't just throw somebody onto an electric bike and go, Right, off you go. You need to have a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of research. There's a lot of charging posts out there and people just see charging posts and they don't realise there's nuances and differences between. And once you realise what's the best for your course of action, whether you just need a little top up and something free and slow is okay, or you need to cover as many miles as you want. Actually, once you get used to it, it, it really is, it becomes second nature. Personally, I feel much more comfortable. I think range anxiety which I have had, a bit a less of a problem for me going forward. What we're trying to do is just give people that knowledge and pass down the knowledge that we've gained over the years. So we really appreciate you coming along, yeah, thank you. riding the bikes. It's been a great day it's for been it. a very good day and, for um, it, yeah. I, I think we need to go and ride some more. And, uh, I think so. Well, that's the biggest takeaway for me is nobody, when they talk about bikes, normal uh, combustion bikes, talks about filling up with petrol and all that sort of stuff. They talk about the riding experience and the riding experience in these bikes is phenomenal. So there you go, not too bad at all, nothing to be scared of. Pretty easy once you get your head around it. So I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have got any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. And all that leaves me to say is, until next time, thanks for watching, take care, 
ride safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.